People feel what you feel about you. Think about that. The energy you put out based on how you feel about yourself, other people are feeling that and then are reflecting that back to you. So if, for example, you have maybe a, uh, like a, an acne, like some type of acne on your face, and you go out and you're really worried about it. And you're like, is everyone looking at this little pimple? Is everyone looking at the pimple? And you feel insecure about it. You're more likely to perceive that other people are staring at the pimple. And if your energy closes in and you feel a specific way, you're going to find that other people may be perceived to like be looking at it more. And that's because of the energy you are embodying. Whereas if you go out and you own it, not that you have to give the pimple special attention, like everyone look at my pimple, it's so cool, you like the pimple, but if you almost just don't give it any importance whatsoever, and you're just being yourself, and you're owning yourself, people won't notice it nearly as much. And if they do, you won't even be attached. I remember one time I had a friend who had uh, kind of a, a pimple that was called a cyst. I guess it was called a cyst or something, or a cyst or something, I don't even know. And they went in public, and they said that they were at a store and someone there was like, said the word insist. And when they said the word insist, they got all insecure and they were like, oh, they were talking about my cysts on my face. And it was like kind of a, an example of this. It's like if you, you're going to perceive of that, if you're insecure about a cyst, then somebody else that says the word insist, you may be like, oh. <laughs> but that's just because of the energy and because of the, the feeling self-conscious about it. But realize that the key and the power of this video that I want to make today is all about owning who you are. Own your vibe. Own who you are. And if you own it, you're putting out this confident energy and then other people will also feel that and it's just a completely different response. Now, let's also understand where insecurity comes from. Now, at, understand this when it comes to insecurity. Insecurity is something that is very natural that everyone has at a certain level. Insecurity. Insecurity is like something about yourself that maybe there's reluctance in accepting and there's a feeling of not feeling safe with that thing. Like maybe you're not going to get your needs met or maybe you're not going to get the approval or the validation because of it. Now here's the thing with insecurity. Insecurity is simply negative programming. That's it. Now understand this and, and realize this. There are people, why is it that there's one person that maybe has $10,000 in the bank and they feel, they feel super secure. They feel like I got $10,000 in the bank. I feel good. I have abundance. Uh, if I need to go buy something, I can. You'll have someone else that has $10,000 in the bank that feels like I don't feel secure. This is nothing. They feel like I always need to bank more. You will have people that make a million dollars a year that feel more insecure than somebody that maybe makes $50,000 a year. Why is that? Because of their internal programming. You will have people, and when you, when you talk about looks, there will be people that you look at and you're like, oh man, that person looks so cool. They're on Instagram. They look like they have the perfect life. And you'll look at them and you'll think that but then you may find out or deep down that may, that person may feel extremely insecure and that's why there's this need to have this perfect persona on Instagram. Now, what's the difference? And then you have somebody, I remember this dude that I used to work with when I worked at, uh, when I sold women's shoes, there was this dude that was just extremely confident in himself and he would always date very beautiful women and you would look at that and you would be like, how does this mix up? Because it's his energy. His energy, he felt confident about himself. He carried himself in a certain way and people responded to him in that way. So when it comes to this, realize you could have somebody that maybe is somewhat out of shape that feels very secure and you could have someone that is like, looks wise at least or whatever, is like, oh, that person looks perfect, but then feels very insecure. You could have someone that makes uh, $50,000 a year or less and somebody that makes a million dollars a year or more, and that person that makes more may feel insecure, and the person that makes less may feel more secure, or maybe they both feel insecure or secure. But the idea behind this is understanding that 
There is pain that comes when you try to control the outer environment to feel more secure. So that's what the insecurity. The insecurity is like, I feel insecure about who I am. I'm going to change myself or change other people's perception of me so that I can get my needs met. But that's going about it the backwards way because insecurity is a reflection of internal programming. So when you go outside and you try to change people's perception, you try to make more money because if you had more money, then you could feel more secure. All of these things are ways of trying to manipulate reality to get your own needs met, but it's going about it the backwards way. It'd be like if you lost your keys and you imagine you lost your keys inside your house and you went outside into your road looking for your keys. Doesn't make much sense, right? Well, that's what happens when there's a level of insecurity and you go out trying to change the external environment. No matter what you do, you're still gonna feel insecure. That's the funny thing. And I, I don't say this to brag necessarily, but like making more abundance in my life, I've made, you know, 30 to $50,000 a year selling women's shoes to like 50, 60K selling women's shoes to then uh, working for myself and making like 70K a year to then eventually making multiple six figures to making seven figures a year. Like I said, I'm not trying to brag, I'm just trying to prove a point. As I started making more and more money, there came a point when I realized that I was just trying to, in a way, feel more and more security. I never wanted to go to my nine to five job back. And there was this, I realized at a certain point, like, hey, no matter how much money I make, I'm never gonna feel like I've made it there. There's always like a higher level. There's always like, there was always a certain level of insecurity that I was trying to fill. And then eventually I realized it just doesn't really matter unless I focus on myself and I focus on feeling safe within my own body. That was what really changed. And the funny thing is that more abundance came when I realized this, but I also let go of trying to control. I let go of trying to, I need to make more money and all of these things. And even right now, as I record this video, I have been taking a big step back from my business because my team and I have been focused on just running live events and planning out this year. And normally the old part of myself is like, I have to do something that makes money. I need to run this. I need to do this. And I just like let it go. And I'm like, it doesn't like, it doesn't really matter in the same way. Like I, I relate to money in a very different way. It has to be really aligned with my heart now. And I don't need it in the sense that like I need my money to go up every year. I made this much last year, I must do even more this year, or I don't feel secure. Now, when you realize, first off, realize insecurity, becoming aware of that energy is where the first step lies. Having the realization that changing the external isn't going to cause the internal to change is very empowering because then you realize you're not gonna go outside of your house looking for the keys that you dropped or maybe it's in your pocket and you don't even realize it. So that's the first step. The next step to this whole insecurity thing is realizing that you can own whatever it is you saw as a flaw, you can begin to own it. You can begin to realize that that flaw may even make, that perceived flaw may actually make you feel more unique. When you own it, other people feel that energy off of you. When it comes to height, for example, I've seen people before, I've actually heard Shaq talk about this. Shaq, you guys know, he's who's like seven foot tall. He said that, that one thing that made Shaq very different than the other people, the other seven footers that he worked, that he uh, played basketball with, he was able to dominate. You wanna know why? He owned his height. He said a lot of times seven foot tall dudes that play basketball, they would feel insecure about their height. They would like make themselves small when they walk into a room. They'd be afraid of like being too rough playing basketball because they were bigger. Because a lot of times as well, if you even look like, I, I mean, I sometimes walking down the street, you might see like a six foot eight or seven foot tall dude and like they, they stand out. The attention goes to them and they may not like that attention because they're so used to it. They may make themselves smaller. What Shaq did, Shaquille O'Neal, what he did is he owned his height and he became an amazing basketball player because of it. He said he wouldn't just play softer, he would actually own it and then he was able to dominate. 
So when it, and it comes to height as well, there are people that are like, like shorter dudes, for example, that are like five foot six or something like that, that really own their height and they own themselves and they carry an energy that is just very powerful and they're not, they don't feel shame. They don't feel ashamed of that. Therefore, they carry themselves different and guaranteed if you get like a five foot six dude that feels confident about himself, he will have very different energy and people will perceive him very differently than someone that's five foot six that feels ashamed about it. Why? Because one owns it, the other doesn't. So realize that this is all relative. This is all relative. I remember talking to my buddy about this one day. I talked to my buddy about this. My buddy is a couple inches taller than me. I'm like five foot nine. I'm not like extremely tall. I'm not extremely short. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I have a buddy of mine though that's five, 11, six foot. He's a couple inches taller than me. I remember thinking, man, that'd be so cool to be just two or three inches taller, you know? Like in shoes, maybe I'm like 5'10", five, 5'11", five, but in shoes, he's like six foot, you know? And I'm like, man, six foot, that'd be so cool. And what happened was I was talking to him about it and he was like, dude, what I would give to have that, to have that head of hair, <laughs> this is what he said. He's like, I would, I would trade you three in, like two or three inches of height for a full head of hair because he recently had to shave his head. Or he chose, he didn't have to, but he chose to. He like owned it. That's a funny thing about my buddy too. My buddy Victor, I'll just go ahead and call him out. I'm gonna tell him about this video, so hopefully he doesn't mind me talking about it. But anyways, he was on the fence. He was starting to like, his hair was starting to thin in certain ways and he was starting to like feel like, oh, what do I do about this? And he was gonna keep like dragging it out, but then eventually he said, screw it, and he shaved it. And he felt so empowered. And then it was funny because then we were talking later about it. I'm like, man, I've always been like average height for a dude. It'd be nice to be like six foot, six foot one. I feel like such a baller then. I feel like a baller walking around. And my buddy Victor was like, it doesn't really make a difference, bro. He's like, I would trade you heights just so I could have a full head of hair. <laughs> and I was like, this is all fucking relative, no matter what you do. And the funny thing is, it's like, I, you, back in the day, I used to be insecure about my height. I would feel insecure about it. And I'd be like, man, you know, you see like, like on dating apps back in the day, you'd see, oh, six foot tall or tall, six foot or taller is like the bare minimum. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, I don't measure up. I'm not six foot tall. But then eventually I just stopped giving a shit and I started owning who I was. And as I did that, I found that I attracted women that didn't care. And that not only that, they thought I was the perfect height. It's funny how that works. The more you own your own insecurities, the more you'll attract people that aren't either superficial or that just like your energy. Because attraction really is about energy. How do you own yourself? I believe that my energy has changed a lot in the last two or three years because I've owned myself more. I've just embraced my own qualities. I haven't tried to change them to get other people to think differently about me. So when we talk about insecurity, realize it's just negative programming. Realize that a lot of times the insecurities you may have may also been hand-me-down from other insecure people, like your parents. Maybe there was a certain insecurity within your parents, or they valued, maybe your parents valued validation and approval and then you took on that value and then you feel insecure because you're trying to manipulate the external environment to change so that you could feel more secure within yourself. But realize that when it comes to insecurity, if you try to manipulate the outer environment, it, even if you get all of those things, even if I manifested becoming six foot two or something and um, like started manifesting like all these external things to change, had everyone's validation in the world and all these things, it would still be dependent on the external and it would be you haven't changed on the inside. When instead, if you just let go, you will then feel more empowered and you won't need their approval, their validation or anything and you'll attract people that accept that about yourself. So a lot of insecurity is about simply self-acceptance. Accept it. And own it. And don't see it as a flaw. See it as a feature. 
See it as a feature. I remember them, I remember hearing a thing once or a monologue once that was about like short dudes rule, not, okay, like this is the idea. Short dudes rule the world. Why? And short, I mean, what, what is, what, what would we define that as? But just in general, like maybe that's average height or something like five foot nine, five foot 10, which I guess isn't short. That'd be average, but you, you get what I mean. But there are people that it's like, it's like if, if you put value onto the height thing, right? It's almost like if you would have been six foot, you almost made it. You almost made it to that taller level, but not quite. Because of that though, that may, that may fuel someone to either become more successful or to become better at getting resources or to become more confident within themselves. Because you look out into the world, there are a lot of people that have what I guess you could call that little man syndrome. Like Kanye West, for example. I met him when I sold women's shoes. And I know he's controversial and everything, and I'm not saying anything about that, but dude has been able to create great amount of success, like billionaire status. And he's like, I think he's like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, Cause I met him in person in, uh, when I sold women's shoes and I know he was a little shorter than me. So, um, it's like, there's that energy and there, there's, who else? I forget, there's, there's a whole monologue on this and I found it very interesting because it's like, there's even more of that drive or whatever, but you could feature that and then realize that as you own it within yourself, it doesn't matter anyways. It's just a belief. It's just programming, even societal programming. Going on to like a dating app or something like that and seeing six foot tall or taller, it's like programming. And it's like realizing that you don't have to succumb to the belief system or compare yourself to the metrics of this society. You can have your own metrics. And those metrics can be values that are deeper, that aren't superficial. Values such as, um, such as authenticity, courage, vulnerability. These are all more empowering values in a way. So a big part of, of transforming insecurity is about realizing that all the outer reality is is a reflection of your inner reality. And instead of trying to change the outer reality, accept different things about yourself, flaws, and feature it. Realize it makes you different. Realize that that could be an aspect of yourself that makes you more unique. And I know we've mainly been talking about like outer qualities, like physical appearance. There's another example of somebody that um, I know, ac I've heard of actresses that were like, had roles and like were, were doing great as being an actress. And then what happened is they got a nose job. And then when they got a nose job, they looked like every other beautiful model that comes in and it actually hurts them. Because before there was something more unique about them. There was something that kind of stood out a little bit more. So that actually, I think, hurt them. And I think I've heard that there are people that have done that. And then it's very hard for them to get roles afterwards because of that. Another example is I heard Jennifer Aniston recently has having like she had a whole bunch of face work done, like Botox and stuff like that. And Botox like paralyzes the face. It paralyzes facial expressions, which first off as well, another side note, the way you're, you express yourself, your face, that actually like changes your emotion. So if you can't move certain emotions on your face, it's like you're almost probably not gonna feel as much emotion. That's why I'll probably never get Botox or any of that stuff. Not dogging on it if you've gotten it or anything. I'm just saying, now, apparently, Jennifer Aniston has had trouble crying or expressing emotion in acting because she's had so much work done. Think about that. It's actually hurt her to do that when instead she could have just own her age. I'm aging. There's a lot of roles where maybe the aging is still beautiful. I believe aging is beautiful. Don't resist aging and you probably won't age as much. Interesting, isn't it? But if you own the flaws and you feature it, you will find that it completely transforms the energy within yourself. Now we talk about other qualities. Realize that when it comes to other qualities, you may be insecure that maybe you don't feel enough uh, courage or you hold yourself back and you feel a lot of doubt. Realize that things are always changing. 
And you can activate this energy inside of yourself by realizing it's already inside of you. It takes courage to look at yourself. It takes courage to do shadow work. You probably already are courageous. You're just putting a very high standard on yourself and then you feel insecure based on that high standard. It's called perfectionism. The feeling of not being good enough and creating such a high standard that it's almost impossible to attain. So one of the most powerful things that you could do is to realize that you can feel secure within yourself by owning who you are, by not letting society or other people tell you what is good enough, by realizing that you are unique, value more your own authenticity than anything else, and you will notice that as you do that, other people respond to you in a different way because people feel what you feel about you. And when you magnetize that energy inside of yourself, it has such a powerful effect. Now, a huge part of letting go of insecurity is becoming aware of the energy that has been attached to since being a child. Becoming aware of that energy and letting it go. Technically, it's letting go of the past to become emotionally free in the present moment, right meow. Now, on April 14th, we're gonna be doing a seven day emotional freedom challenge. So if you wanna let go of your past and become emotionally free in seven days or less, that's gonna be the focus. It's gonna be pretty much a seven day live event with breath work, somatic release practices. Uh, it's gonna be a whole live event. You can get the replay if you can't make it live, but it's April 14th. If you want to claim your spot, then go ahead and click the link below in the description box or go to that of aarondowdy.com slash emotion slash emotion and sign up for that challenge. I'll go ahead and link it right here as well. Grab your spot. I'm super excited for the seven day challenge and I hope to see you there. So there you go.